Hello, Rick Riding here from the UK Sports Ground Safety Authority with a brief introduction to stadium capacity calculations. Before I start, it's important to understand that capacity calculations are complex and should only be developed by someone with a comprehensive understanding of sports ground safety, stadium design, crowd management or crowd movement. So for the next 15 minutes, I will only explain the basics of providing a safe capacity within the sports grounds. That said, setting a safe capacity is nothing new. We consider setting a safe capacity to be the first and probably the most important aspect of delivering a safe, secure and enjoyable event. If the photo on the left of the screen is the 1923 FA Cup final when Wembley expected 125,000 spectators and it was estimated 300,000 turned up and the pitch had to be cleared by a police horse before the game started. The photo on the right is the London Olympics 2012, showing a well-managed crowd and indicating that if a capacity is set correctly, it will lead to a safe, secure and enjoyable event for all. So how do we go about setting the safe capacity? Well, first of all, I'd like to introduce a guidance document that's internationally recognised called the Guide to Safety at Sports Grounds. We call it the Green Guide. This guide has been used extensively all over the world and in fact, every Olympics since, since 2000 for the last 20 years has used this to set the safe capacity. The safe capacity isn't the, the physical, just the physical number of seats that you've got in the stadium. There's quite a, a, a considerations that you've got to take into, into account. The holding capacities that will be the number of seats, but then we've got to look at the physical conditions. Is the infrastructure suitable and sufficient? We've got to look at this quality of the safety management, all the entrances, can people get in without excessive queuing, look at the circulation within the stadium, are the concourses big enough, can people move around the stadium, and then look at the exit systems, whether that be directly after the, the game's finished or in an emergency if the fire alarm goes off. So, chapter two particular of the Green Guide looks at the importance of setting the safe capacity. And within that chapter, there are some process maps that indicate the methodology and go step by step at calculating each individual process so that you can end up at a final occupational figure. We've also included on our website some worked examples. Now, these are free to download, so I would advise anybody who's interested in this subject to go on the website, look at, type in SGSA and then look at the green guide and then the, you can download these three. The first worked example is on, on the right hand side of your screen is a football stadium. Now if you look at that that particular worked example the north terrace is a standing terrace and it's front loaded whereas at the south terrace is a standing terrace which is rear loaded and then on the east side we, we've indicated a seated stand which is front loaded and on the west side there is a seated stand that's vomitory loaded. What we've also done in this particular works example is have a look at an increase in security risk where people might have to increase their searching regime. The middle diagram is a horse racing enclosure. For horse racing, it's particularly important that there is free circulation around the, the, the course because people will want to move from the betting booths to the track side maybe from the stand to the track side, or even from the parade ring to look at the horses prior to the race and then move to the track side. So what we've done, we've looked at, is there a possibility of overcrowding when everybody moves simultaneously from something like the parade ring to the track side? In this particular example, we've also looked at a terrorist incident happening in one of the enclosures. So let's say it's the members enclosure. Can people move safely? into the Tattersall's enclosure and then into the family enclosure and away from the terrorist incident. This is called horizontal progressive evacuation. On the left hand side of your screen, there is a cricket ground. It's really important for cricket grounds again to have free circulation around the ground. But each individual stand has to be calculated separately. We've also included marquee capacities and even level standing in front of the marquee. But the uniqueness of, of cricket grounds is that generally exiting 
is, is all done simultaneously. In this particular worked example, there are three exits and we did a scenario where one exit had a suspect package and then everybody needed to evacuate using the other two exits and, and what implications that would have on the capacity calculation. So let's look at the steps. The first step is the holding capacity. For seated accommodation, that's, that's easy. We just count the number of seats. So whatever seats you have in there, as long as you take out any severely restricted views and make sure that all the seating accommodation meets the current standards of the green guide, whether it be the, the width of the vomitories and the gangways or the seatways. But for standing accommodation, it's a bit more complex. What we do, we calculate the area behind the barriers. So we'll look at the barriers and then we'll apply a density factor. Now this density factor is how many people you would get in a 10 square meter area. The green guide sets it out at 47 for every 10 square meters. However, that's sometimes difficult to achieve on stadiums where people are unfamiliar with the terracing. So we recommend generally 40 people per every 10 square meters. And if you look at the diagram at the top, that's a, that's a typical indication of what 40 people for every 10 square meters looks like. Then we apply the PNS factor. So let's have a look at what the PNS factor is. So the S factor is a safety management assessment. It must be done by a competent person. You would normally expect this to be done by a safety officer and then independently agreed with the local authority when issuing the safety certificate. So it must be recorded. It's usually done on an annual basis unless there are changes in the, uh, in the structure of the safety management and it's expressed as a value of zero to one. So if it's excellent safety management, you would have one. And if it's poor safety management, you could have 0.5 or even zero. For the key considerations, we've produced a, a guidance document that you can download free from the SGSA website again called S Factor Indicative Questions. That covers all aspects of the issues, the qualification of the safety officer, stewarding plan and various things like that. We've also done this for the P Factor. So we produced a document called Indicative Questions. Again, you can download it free. But this assessment is, a, is an assessment of the physical conditions. So again, it must be carried out by a competent person. This would normally be a structural engineer. And again, it's expressed at zero to one. So if you had a poorly maintained stadium, like the ones on the picture on the right, then you would give it a zero. If the infrastructure was all well maintained, well lit, met all the current standards, then it would be given a, a P factor of one. So how do we apply these P factors? It's quite simple, to be honest with you. If you look at this diagram, if you looked at the main stand and it's, you said it had 10,000 people and for whatever reason, you give a P factor of 0.9. So say that the seats were broken or something and you only wanted to give it 0.9, then that will be 9,000 for the P factor. But you were looking at the S factor also and you carried out the indicative questions and spotted that the safety officer wasn't fully qualified, but he was working towards it. So until he was fully qualified, you were only going to allow an S, S factor of 0.8, then that would be 8,000. Now you don't add the, these two factors together. It's just you, you choose the lowest one of the two and that will be your, your holding capacity for that stand. So in this case, a 10,000 stand will be reduced to 8,000 due to an S factor of 0.8. So step two is looking at the entry capacity. The entry capacity is based on the number of ingress points or the turnstiles, and then we times that by a flow rate. The green guide gives a flow rate of 660 per hour. So basically, if you add 10 turnstiles, you times that by 660, and that stand would be able to accommodate 6,600 people. This calculation is normally done over an hour, and that's for football, where generally people do turn up 10 minutes before the kickoff or the start of the game. It can be different for different sports. However, if you're going to deviate from that hour, I would suggest you do a risk assessment, look at your historical data and make sure that people aren't just going to turn up 10 minutes before kickoff. Step four is your normal egress. This is the time based on people not getting agitated. Basically, we set it at eight minutes. 
Research in the early 70s indicated that after seven and a half minutes, people do get agitated once they're queuing. So we set an, an, a normal egress time of eight minutes. Now that's not leaving the entire stadium. That is just leaving the area to a free flowing exit system. Now that free flowing exit system is usually the vomitory or outside the ground. How we calculate that? We calculate it by the flow rates. Now that flow rate is 82 people per minute per metre on flats and 66 people per minute per metre on stairs. So if your vomitory was a metre wide and you, uh, you would times the 66 on a stair by your eight, by your metre, and that would give you a, a number of people that could get to that vomitory within an eight minute period. It's really important though that all the particular standards for that uh, stand are maintained, the evacuation, lighting, gangways, all the stairs. Then, you, then step five, you, you have a look at the emergency egress. The emergency egress is based on the fire risk assessment. This fire risk assessment is for high fire risk, so a timber, stadium, a timber stand will be high fire risk, and that's based on two and a half minutes. A medium one would be six minutes and a low one would be eight minutes. Then you would times that once you've got that evacuation time, then you look at the flow rate and the flow rate for emergency egress is exactly the same as the normal egress. So it's 82 people per metre per minute on the flat and 66 people per metre per minute on stairs. So you again, you would times if it was a high risk stadium, two and a half minutes, by your 66 on a stair, by your meter, whatever your vomitory width is, and that would give you a capacity. This is only to a place of reasonable safety, which would normally be the concourse. So as long as the concourse is compliant with the green guide, so in other words, all the shutters for the kiosks have fusible links on, then, then that would be classed as a place of reasonable safety. Figure 13 within the green guide explains this in a lot more detail about where your eight minutes starts and where your eight minutes finish and then where a place of reasonable safety starts and where a place of reasonable safety finishes. You must also include all staff within the stadium. Some of the larger stadiums have maybe uh, 3,000 staff and so it's really important that if there's an emergency evacuation everybody can leave that stadium safely. So the final occupancy is, is simply the lowest one, the lowest figure of those stepped calculations that you've done. So you've calculated your holding capacity, you've times that by your PS factor and in our work example it ended up at 8,000. Then you look at how many people you can get in, so you've done your calculation of 660, you look at the normal egress, and you look at the emergency egress and the lowest figure of all those will give you the final occupancy and you must never exceed that final occupancy. Stadiums now are multi-use and, and so what we've done, we've produced a document called Alternative Uses to Sports Grounds. This helps you to calculate the amount of people you'd be able to get on a pitch and, and, and it also goes into quite a bit of detail about all the things that are indicated here, types of barriers, waste management, fire risk assessment. So it's definitely worth obtaining a copy of the SGSA's Alternative Uses Guide. And if you wanted to purchase a copy of the Green Guide, just please go to our website, www.sgsa.org.uk forward slash Green Guide. Thank you for your time.